Hello and welcome back to Char Reads. Today we're going to be talking about why we sleep, the new science of sleep and dreams by Matthew Walker. This is from the Penguin Science and Health series um, and it came out in 2017. This book covers the whole gamut of sleep related content. What sleep is, the history of sleep studies and how we kind of discovered the phases of sleep, sleep in other animals, why we dream, things that affect sleep quality like drugs and caffeine, and obviously just how to improve your sleep habits. Um, it's basically a dude being like, please take sleep more seriously, both as like an individual and on like a global scale as like an economic factor. This was one of those non-fiction books where I feel like I kind of already knew all of it. There were very few things that shocked me. Um, and I think there were some things that were meant to shock you, but I think I've just kind of like absorbed a lot of that information from like school education, but also other general science books um, and, you know, podcasts and that kind of thing. But the thing about reading a book like this, as I've said before in, in videos about nonfiction stuff, especially like environmental related things, is that it pounds it into your head and it makes it linger long enough to actually have an effect and not just be kind of like an in one ear, out the other sort of factoid. The trouble with a book like this is that it wants to empower you, but the only ways it can empower you are really negative. It's not like you wake up in the morning and think, ah, oh, now I know so much more about sleep. I feel really good about that sleep I just had. It's always the opposite. It just engenders such a fear of doing the wrong thing and guilt because you know what's the bad thing to do now. Some of the things I have enacted, um, I try to go to bed at 11 and wake up at seven in the morning. Um, and I was doing that for a while before I read this. So I read this about a month ago. It's had time to, it's had time to sink in. And I felt pretty good about having that schedule. But one thing that this shifted for me is that there's no point in having a weekday schedule and then it just going to pot on the weekends and you sleeping in loads on the weekends to make up for the, the other days because then it shifts your rhythm and then you're gonna have a really difficult time like getting to sleep on Sunday night and waking up on Monday morning. Definitely that's a habit that's a lot easier to sustain when it's very difficult to have a social life that keeps you up late at night on the weekends. Uh, but I'm really enjoying that rhythm in my life at the moment. It has really put fear into me about the effects of caffeine and alcohol. Um, it's funny, it literally says, drink in the morning if you're gonna drink, <laughs> give it time to get out of your system. And now like, if I, you know when you're just like, shall I have that extra one drink? And usually it's like, oh, why not? Now I'm just so, I, I, like it's ruined the last drink for me. I can never have a last drink. With all of those kind of things like having a last drink um, or what time to go to bed and how much sleep to get, I know the right thing and I've been a bit bad, but now I have to tell myself that I'm being really bad. It particularly upset me when he said that decaf tea has, it's not got no caffeine in it, it has about a fifth of the caffeine in it. Um, and I was like, I know that decaf has like not nothing, but you know, a fifth isn't very much. And I, after like 4 p.m., I will only drink decaf. Um, but still, if you're having six cups of decaf, that's the same as having a, a full cup of, of caffeinated tea. And he's just like, any amount, any amount is really, really bad for your sleep. And because you're so aware of it, you wake up and think, I slept badly because of that alcohol, not just like, I slept badly, who knows? Um, and yeah, it lingers in the brain a lot more. It infects you. But like, it's all for our own good, right? It's not like he's striking fear and guilt into me against my best interests. Um, but I think, yeah, when when things start get going again and I can like go out on the weekends and have some fun, oh, I'm just gonna feel really naughty about going to bed late and drinking before sleeping. And it's, yeah, two more tiny things. Um, one thing you were saying about your like daily circadian rhythms, during your kind of adolescence, they shift forward like literally two hours. So I was I was one of those like teenagers that could survive off like five hours sleep. Um, but he really makes a point for why do we start schools earlier and earlier in the, in the morning? Um, because literally like teenage bodies will want to go to sleep two hours later and wake up two hours later and that's the way they should and they will naturally regress um, in their twenties. Uh, and yeah, damn, I've been like forced into so much sleep deprivation <laughs> through my school years. He makes a, a lot of cases for little shifts like that that would massively improve global productivity. Um, so yeah, yeah, sleeping and having kind of flexible working hours for, for, for night, night larks, 
morning larks? Night owls. Night owls and morning larks. <laughs> it's just so much, so much content about sleep in this book. Almost too much. Like if you've come into it um, for self-improvement tips, you're gonna find them in the last like quarter of the book. Actually, on one of the last pages, it says appendix 12 tips for healthy sleep. You could just, if you read that like 50 times, you, it will probably sink in more than <laughs> reading the whole book and taking, taking you less time. Um, but I did also enjoy the kind of like, uh, just like historical science aspects of it. Um, I love reading. I love reading about science. Science is so interesting. I feel so enriched when I read about science. If you have read this book, let me know what you liked about it. Has it slightly ruined your life as well as it's ruined mine. Um, and yeah, let me know if you, you want to read this based on this review. Um, I will see you in the comments down below and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.